Wow, it's absolutely wonderful to be here and to be so together. I think this is the first time I really worshipped for about a year and a half. You know, <laughs> I mean, no, that's not quite true because we have had some uh, in our church that have uh, spread out. But it's so lovely to be all cosy together like this and we just pray it won't be too long. And of course, to be especially with my wonderful friends, <laughs> Chris and Ruth, it's just been such a blessing. Um, so it's just wonderful to see you all, those I know and those I don't know. It's really good to see people we don't know as well. Anyway, I'm going to read from Philippians chapter four this morning. Philippians chapter four. Starting at verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you've renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you've been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. Amen. Well, I cause chaos if I just move that. But I will, won't I? I'll put it back again yeah, in a minute, sorry. Alistair. Already creating a hazard. Yeah. Well, it's, as, as Rose says, it's just lovely to be um, with you and with you in person. I've enjoyed actually speaking in uh, recent months uh, via Zoom and uh, well, here we are uh, together in the flesh. You know, at 5.30 or five o'clock this morning, it was a glorious morning. Um, I'm boasting because I was up then. I, I just felt, I had it on my heart. I felt God just, I'm sure other people that speak get this sort of thing. I felt God just changing everything I was going to do. So I was going to give you a message from Revelation. So now we're, we're going to look at something from Philippians. But as I say, it was a beautiful morning. And I, I, I was reminded of the story. Forgive me, some of you, you probably think, oh, we've heard that one before. But I do love the story of, of, of the four people in, in a railway carriage. And this is sometime in the 1950s. Some of you uh, wouldn't remember that when railway carriages had compartments and there were four people in this compartment. There was uh, a private soldier, his commanding officer, an older lady and a young woman. And the, the train went through a tunnel. And as the train was going through a tunnel, all that could be heard was a kiss and a slap. And the old woman thought, that young man must have reached over and kissed the young woman and she must have slapped him. And, and the young woman thought, that young man must have reached over and kissed me and the older woman must have slapped him. And the commanding officer thought, that young woman thought I kissed her and she slapped me. <laughs> and the young man said, what a beautiful day when you can kiss a young woman and slap your commanding officer. <laughs> it's all right, Sally. I obviously haven't told it here recently. But anyway. um, wow, we're living in interesting times, aren't we? Yes. We really are. 
I mean, I, I've had the privilege of being a Christian now uh, over 50 years. And I'm going to say, that I, I would say this is the toughest time I've been through in, in many, many ways. Um, about 12 months ago, it's all right. Oh, good lad. <laughs> about 12 months ago, you know, we were hearing that, you know, despite COVID, more and more people were, were tuning in in terms of um, online services etc etc and that's great but can I just say I think the tides turned a bit Covid is doing no favours to the church at the moment and it's causing divisions and it's causing problems I just praise God <laughs> I just praise God that we're together here this morning uh, enjoying fellowship we've been able to worship and we just need to to persevere in these things we're overcomers you know i was going to speak from revelation we are overcomers that's what the letters to the churches say that blessed are those who overcome paul says this in 1 corinthians 2 he says this and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not rest upon the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. I'm praising God because I do really believe in my heart that we're going to go through a good season. I just believe that, but it is going to be in demonstration of the power and the spirit. Now, I, 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 I'm weary of, of church life that just, you know, just floats along i'm looking for something i'm sure you are i'm hungry hungry for something of god something uh, dynamic now rosemary read to us from philippians and i put it to you if you were to receive a letter from the apostle paul this is the letter you want to receive it's often regarded as the happiest letter that paul wrote there's hardly any correction in it and the letter reveals a people enjoying an intimacy with God. There are several themes in this letter. And the one theme I want to lay hold of this morning is this. It teaches us how to triumph over circumstances. So wherever you are this morning, uh, I trust that we'll gain something from God in enabling us to triumph over whatever the circumstances i just know some are laid aside and i just think of my good friend brian in hospital and brian bless you brother we're just praying for your full recovery in paul's letter to the ephesians he emphasizes um, the necessity to grow and to mature in an uh, in an unpredictable world i mean Bear in mind, Paul's situation was not easy. This is one of the prison epistles. Paul is writing this letter to the Philippians from Rome. He's under house arrest. And uh, uh, in all probability, a chained to a Roman soldier. As has been said before, it's one thing to be chained to a Roman soldier, altogether another thing to be chained to Paul. <laughs> And, and two things that Paul says in this letter, in this fourth chapter, I, I want to draw attention to specifically. Verse 11, I've learned that in whatever state I'm in, therein to be content. And then in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, for the purest among you, uh, to put those verses into context, it's actually financial. Now, the verses it's perfectly legitimate to give them a wider and more general application but Paul is just saying you know I know that whether I'm in uh, if my finances are in good state I I'm happy if they're not I know how to live I just know how to live I know how to find grace so Paul is saying then in his writing from jail that when things are not going good when things are not going well I can deal with everything through the strength of Jesus Christ. Now what he's learned, it says he's learned. It wasn't a native sort of talent. He didn't wake up or get up from the Damascus road and say, well, I've learned in all things. I, I know how to be content. It was a growing experience. I don't know about you, but I've been doing quite a bit of 
reading during lockdown and uh, I, I've been rereading a lot of the stuff I have regarding George Muller and uh, I think sometimes he you know he can be a bit overlooked um, I don't think he, he, he would sort of list himself as being especially charismatic but forget that I'm by the way I'm not interested in labels at all if you say well who's John Putnam well I'm not charismatic I just want to be a spiritual man please don't label me you know what I mean George Muller teaches me what it is to be a spiritual man Muller said this in May 1861 and <laughs> those that very well have heard me say this on a few occasions because it's become, become almost a mantra to me Muller said this in May 1861 that the first great and primary business to which I ought to attend every day is to ensure that my soul is happy in the Lord. And, and I, you know, frankly, that is, that's not selfish. Muller is just saying, look, the first thing I'm going to do every day is to ensure that I'm drawing upon Jesus Christ, that I'm happy in the soul, that I may serve others. And as most of us know, you know, he had tremendous responsibilities there in the middle of the 19th century in running these orphanages. I love the story, incidentally, uh, you may know it when his, uh, the, the, the ship on which he is traveling is about to dock. This is in the later years of his life when he traveled a bit and he's traveling to Canada and the, uh, the ship is or the boat is about to dock in Vancouver. He's to speak at a meeting in Vancouver. You know the story, the fog descends, uh, the captain des decides to drop anchor and Muller says to him, him yeah but i'm to speak in vancouver tonight and i've never missed a meeting yet i've never been late for a meeting and i believe god wants me to speak tonight <laughs> but the captain says yeah but the fog has fallen and and muller says this he says may i pray and then he actually says to the captain may i pray because god answers my prayers well when i read that i've underlined that a few times in my little copy of his autobiography May I pray? Because God answers my prayers. Well, I'm just praying that I may grow into some of that. <laughs> One sees uh, prayers answered is in a measure, but what it must be to be in such fellowship that you know that what I'm demanding or what I'm asking of you, Lord, I know it's in your will and I can safely pray that you will do it. The challenge for us then is, at the moment, is to believe in the justice of God when and unfair things are happening. Unfair things are happening this morning, but God is just. I've discovered this over a few years, that weak moments are doorways to the strength of God. Never forget being in a meeting once when um, a guy stood up and he just said, he, he was being prophetic and, and he, he was delivering a prophecy and he said this, you're so hard for me to bless. You're so strong. Wow, when he said that, I felt, ouch. I really felt that was God. You know, that sometimes, you know, we can be so full of ourselves and what we're doing that God says, you know what? Let the weak say, I am strong. You know, his grace, his power, it says, doesn't it? In Corinthians is manifested in weakness. You know, the planet on which we live is out of harmony with the creator. The creation is out of harmony with the creator. And when that happens, unfair things happen. You know, that, 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 that's the problem. We're all laughing and joking this morning and rightly so. And I just get this bit in. It's my only mention to tonight, you know, I'll have one eye on it, of course I will. But you know what? It ain't gonna matter one iota tomorrow what there is. It really doesn't matter because I'm concerned with eternal things. Sadly, as a nation, you know, I mean, look, John, get on to another subject. <laughs> but, but God, but football has been a God in this country for 50 years now. And we just need to understand. We just long that the nation may taste something deeper. I want to cry and say that, go on England win, I do, I want England to win, of course I do. But let me just say this, what I want far more is for the nation to experience the love and the grace 
of God and greater victories uh, than a match at Wembley. Are we all getting wet? Do we need to get into cover, guys? Is everyone all right? Yeah. Let's have yeah. I think this happened. <laughs> Hey, look, someone's come prepared. Wonderful. I love it. Hey. <laughs> so Paul is saying, he's saying, look, regardless of everything that is wrong, I'm going to rejoice in the God who loves me. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I am in touch with something that is eternal. I am in something that is larger than my circumstances and that's really the point what i want to leave you with this morning well that's that's the thing i'm i'm, I'm looking towards being in touch with someone who is larger than our circumstances yes. you know god is able um we've been on a little bit of a journey to get to stone market and uh, i i mean you know we uh, i think some of you know we've um buying a bungalow just up there and um uh, but but it's been a journey but it's been okay god is in it and we rejoice that we complete on that very very soon um and we're excited about the next chapter in our lives so so you know paul says this i am in touch with someone larger than the immediate consequences of my situation and we need that it doesn't matter if if you're a businessman or woman this morning whatever you're doing you need to be in touch with someone who is larger than the situation and paul says you know he says you know i'm i'm seeking to praise god whatever the circumstances you know glasses are important um i wear glasses to read and etc etc et and you know what we all wear spectacles not all the spectacles we wear we wear are sort of um prescribed by an optometrist or whatever but the spectacles we wear what are we how are we seeing life you know um, we need to see things as they are for 3500 years mankind watched the sun rise in the east and the sun set in the west and assumed that the sun was going around the earth entirely wrong things were not as he supposed i want to say to this morning things are not as you suppose if you're feeling defeatist this morning if you're feeling whatever's going to happen let me assure you that god is on the throne and god is greater than whatever is facing you things are not as they appear you know when um when, when john is um the apostle john you know he's, he's on, on patmos everything is wrong he's breaking up stones he's on this island 15 minutes uh, 15 miles out in the aegean sea there is no hope and yet god says look i want to he says look come up i want to lift you higher i want you to see things as they really are and he has this wonderful vision of god on the throne the throne of god this morning is not vacant there is no vacancy god is seated on the throne looking after you and looking after me there is far more uh you know for us to understand than sometimes meets the eye we're told that we walk by faith and not by sight the problem is and the problem for me the, the battle i'm up against is so often i lose uh, sight of where i am because i'm walking by sight sight and not by faith sorry thanks so uh, uh so it's very hard for a person like me i apologize to those that think i've wandered off i am still here but i do walk around a bit but i promise you i will walk off in a few minutes but anyway <laughs> you know it is sig yeah it is significant you know that whenever the lord jesus christ was in difficulty he quoted scripture that is incredible you know when he's on the cross he quotes psalm 22 when he's detempted of the devil he quotes scripture etc etc you know we need to be doing the same i cannot tell you the release it brings to my soul um some of you again i apologize you've heard me say it before you probably hear me say it again but if you're feeling downcast in any way or trouble just take one particular verse and memorize it 
and just say it throughout the day. Let it become truth into your very soul. It is, you know, <clears throat> Jesus himself quoted scripture. We need to do the same. Very quickly then, let me say this. You know, the psalmist David says this. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. When you look at that verse in Acts chapter 2, you notice that it's the presence of God that affected his seeing. Peter, <laughs> Peter says, quoting that from Psalm 16, he says, it's the presence of God that affects my seeing. And that's what I want us to enjoy. It's what I want to enjoy for myself. The presence of God affecting our seeing. Well, I'm going to move on very, very quickly and just say, just give you five headings from the reading that Rosemary said. Because he's when he's Paul he's said, he's 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 sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, when, when Paul, you know, when Paul says he's learned to be content, when Paul says I can do all things, in the previous six verses, he's given the clue as to how he can do that. First of all, he says, you know, rejoice again. And I say rejoice, you know, cultivate a spirit of rejoicing. Nineteen times in Philippians, Paul encourages rejoicing. Over 70 times in the New Testament, we're encouraged to rejoice. Rejoice again in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Second thing is this. Be gentle. Now, what does that mean? I think in, in the ESV, the translation is be reasonable. The Lord is at hand. We are to be reasonable people. Let's be reasonable with one another and be content because the Lord is at hand. And then we have this verse, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That is a key verse. Um, our, our move to, to, to Stowe Market has not been that smooth. So moves seldom are. There are always problems or difficulties and territory to walk through. Oh, um, it's lovely that, um, that, that, that Chris and Ruth are with us this morning. We shared this with them several months ago. And I had this verse on my mind, and it was the very verse that night that Ruth brought. And she said, I've just got this verse for you, and I'm going to give it now. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Can I just encourage us all, myself included, to continually, whenever we petition the Lord, be thankful. Find something to be thankful for. It's a vital truth in scripture. Um, Paul doesn't say that for nothing. He says, be anxious for nothing, but don't worry. But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Cast your cares upon him. And what's the fruit of all that? The peace of God, which passes understanding, that is the fruit of waiting upon him. And then he says this, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue in these things, look at these things. He says, meditate upon these things. Do this. So rain's beginning to fall, so we're, we're going to bring this to a conclusion. But can I just encourage you? throughout this season, throughout this week, just to be meditating on the goodness of God. God's goodness is all around us. There are many problems, but God's goodness is greater than any problem that we're facing. Look upon the things 
um, that bring pleasure and delight. And the fruit of it all is that we will be victorious. We've got a battle on, but we're going to be, we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. You know what it is to be more than a conqueror, don't you? It's like a heavyweight boxer who's been away from his family for four months. He's been training hard. He wins his title bout and he comes home to his family and says, there's the check. <laughs> you know, we are more, he has, our God, our, our Lord Jesus Christ has won the battle. He says, I want you to enjoy the fruits. I want you to enjoy the peace. I want you to enjoy the contentment. I want to, you to enjoy the triumph that is mine, but is shared with you. Hallelujah. Yes. What a saviour. Amen. Amen. Let us go on encouraging one another to see great things in our God. Amen. 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 Just in all, whoever it is.